Blessings, kings and queens. Today is February the 14th, 2024. Happy Valentine's Day. Our subject for this video is Gate 30, Passion, The Clinging Fire, The Gate of Feeling. Listen, you don't want to go anywhere because I'm about to drop some gems, some knowledge, some wisdom, so stay tuned. Guys, I've got six key points that I want to discuss with you in this video. Number one, we want to deep dive into our transit gate 30 of the solar plexus center. Number two, our challenge for the week while we collectively experience gate 30's energy. Number three, our journal questions. Write them down. Think about them. Meditate on them. Take a walk with them or even discuss them with your friends. Number four, our affirmations to help empower us, deepen our faith and trust in ourselves while navigating this energy. Number five, our emotional freedom technique. This helps to break habitual programming that has been placed on us by society's conditioning. And number six is our earth bonus. You don't want to miss it, so stay tuned to the very end. I'm looking for my people. I'm looking for my tribe. I'm looking for those like-minded individuals who are on what I'm on. And since you've landed yourself in this video, that means you're on what I'm on. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future human design exploration study videos. Before we deep dive, I want you guys to grab your journals, grab your blankets, grab a cup of tea or beverage of your choice and grab your chart. If you don't have your charts, I've listed a few websites that you can go to to get your charts for free. So right now, if you're looking at your body graphs and you're saying to yourself, I don't have gate 30 defined in my chart, that is okay. Because for the next five days or so, gate 30's energy is available to all of us because we are in transition of it. Otherwise, if we weren't transitioning this gate, you'd be able to get this energy by coming into a person's aura with this gate defined. If you're then saying to yourself, Faith, how do I know who has gate 30 defined in their chart? The way to know that is by going into a public place, like a mall, a mall food court, a library, a gym or any place of that nature and possibly someone with gate 30 defined in their chart would come into your aura. I do have gate 30 consciously defined in my chart. Gate 30 can be found in the solar plexus center. It connects to the root center via gate 41. Together, they created the channel called the Channel of Recognition. This channel is in the sensing circuit. These channels and gates are projected gate channel types. We will discuss this channel in a later video. We have discussed the solar plexus center and its correlation to the solar plexus chakra in the Hindu chakra system as well as its correlation to Hod and Netzek in the Kabbalistic Tree of Life in the Gate 37 video. I will leave a link to that video in the description box. Gate 30 is called the Gate of Passion. An archetypical name is the Deep Feeler. We find this gate on the Aquarius Pisces Cups. This gate's human design definition is freedom recognized as an illusion and limitation accepted as fate. This gate's core theme is the fear of fate. This is the purpose fulfilled through the mind. This energy can sustain a dream, an intention, or a vision until it's brought to form. 
This energy can inspire passion in others with the power of dreams. On the positive end of the pole, gate 30 is the energy for reveling in the intensity of desire or emotions. All the emotions that you feel, positive or negative, are a natural part of the human experience. This energy sustains intensity and is aware of how that intensity impacts others around you. This energy is clarity on how you enter a situation or experience. It influences the experience and it knows that it cannot influence the outcome. On the negative end of the pole, gate 30 is the energy for destructive sensations and intensity seeking. Without surrendering to the positive and negative emotions, you can lose faith in life and the connection to desire. You can experience burnout if you don't focus on what you want, are not in alignment, or are suppressed. Your intense energy can burn others out around you. You take unreciprocated desires personally. You fear surrender and acceptance of your emotions. Your fear of fate or the outcome will cause you to chase fantasies. The key to rising the frequency of gate 30 is to trust your inner wisdom. Fully exploring your desires can help you gain clarity on which ones to pursue and which ones to let go of. Focus only on what you want and accept what is. Let's put this into some context. Gate 30 is defined in my chart but my solar plexus center is undefined. Gate 30 is also in my conscious Mars transit. The Mars in your chart represents your life lessons and what you're attracted to in a relationship. Like many others in my generation and generations before me, I was terrified of my emotions. I was conditioned to believe that my emotions were a problem even the so-called positive ones, and that I was terrible and wrong in expressing them. I also carry the sign of Aquarius. Aquarian energy is very cold, but deeply passionate once you can break the surface barrier. So for me, having gate 30 is deep desire. Mars also represents the God of War, representing deep passion, a cold-hearted Aquarian, and our society's conditioning for hiding your feelings, I've been in deep conflict about my desires. It manifested as being afraid to open up about my passions and romantic love. People who feel deeply and aren't afraid to express themselves have always been attractive to me, and not just romantically. I have admired and envied folk who have the audacity and courage to go after what they want. The people who aren't afraid to show how they feel. The people who are intentional and clear about their life's purpose. The people who aren't afraid of outcomes and who speak of outcomes positively, especially at an early age. To cope with all this conflict, I developed escape tactics. I'd hide in my solitude and overuse alcohol and marijuana. While most people overeat, I undereat. I was skinny and underweight for a long time. So this left me very unsatisfied with myself. I found that numerologically, being born on the first, my archetype is the warrior. This is a passionate person. This person protects and fights for what they believe in. So again, I also have an open solar plexus center. And this means that I absorb the emotions of others. 
especially the emotions of folk with defined solar plexus centers. Through the study of human design, I learned that most of those deep emotions that I was feeling weren't even mine. I became more aware of myself and my emotions. I began to create stricter boundaries and created boundaries where there were none previously. My desire for being alone did not go away. Being that I am a 6'2 role model hermit, human design archetype, and Aquarius astrology archetype. But the time spent alone in pure aura time was of better quality. I learned to discern which emotions were mine and which emotions weren't. During the shadow work brought on the clarity and allowed me to let go of all the shit that wasn't mine. When I became unafraid of my emotions and allowed them to just be, I gained the wisdom that allowing emotions is what brings the wisdom and clarity. I discovered pleasure in negative emotions as well. I started to get turned on and attracted to and horny. Yes, I said horny. Through the study of spirituality, breath work, kundalini, meditations, study of those emotions. That's what it essentially means to be human. Our soul wants to experience the good and the bad of our emotions. To be present in your emotions, even when they become intense. I'm not perfect, but I've learned to handle my emotions better. If you've been resistant to your emotions, I encourage you to open up and bask in them. Our purpose, the reason why we live, is to feel and to feel deeply. Listen, I am not an expert by any means. I am an initiate, just like you all. So while y'all are studying with me, I'm studying with y'all. So if any part of this human design study resonates with you, I want you to go ahead and give me a high five or a thumbs up in the comments. Just let me know that you're here. We are challenged this week to be able to sustain a dream or vision without burning out. To know which dream to be passionate about. To not let passion overwhelm you and to wait for the right time to share your passion with the world. Get those pens out and write down these journal questions. What am I passionate about? Have I lost my passion? How is my energy? Am I physically burned out? Am I burned out on my idea? What must I do to sustain my vision or dream? about what I'm inspired to create in my life. Do I have a dream or vision I'm avoiding because I'm afraid that it won't come true? If you've made it this far, I know by now you're feeling me. If you haven't already, let me get that high five or that thumbs up in the comments. If you have any questions or a comment, go ahead and leave me one there. If you leave a question or a comment in the first three days of the premiere of this video, I'll be sure to respond to you right away. We only have a few more points to go till we get to the bonus at the end, so hang in there with me. If you are following along in the transcript, affirm with me. I am a passionate creator. I am clear about my intentions and desires. I use the intensity of my passion to increase my emotional energy and sustain the power of my dream and what I imagine for my life. I only focus on what I want. I trust in divine flow and I wait for the right timing and the right circumstances to act on my dream. I have been working in the shadow journal workbook 
I want to add an action step to the EFT. While reciting the EFT, take two or three fingers and tap the top of your head, eyebrow, side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, chin, collarbone, or under the arm. Our emotional freedom technique goes a little something like this. Even though my excitement feels like fear, I now choose to go forward with my passion on fire, fully trusting in the infinite, abundance of the universe, and I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Our earth bonus is passing through gate 29, devotion. Who would you be? And what would you choose if you permitted yourself to say no more often? What would you like to say no to that you are currently saying yes to? What obligations do you need to take off your plate right now? Kings and queens, let's remember to treat our bodies well. If we take care of our bodies, our bodies will take care of us. Let's eat well, rest well, drink eight glasses of water every day. Let's exercise at least twice a week. Let's do our daily meditations and journaling either in the morning when we wake up or at night before we go to bed. Listen, I really appreciate you for joining me on this exploration of human design deep dive and the gate of passion. You could have chosen to be doing anything else in the world. You could have chosen to be anywhere else in the world, but you chose to spend your time here with me in this video. And believe me guys, that choice doesn't go unnoticed. I thank you. Remember to do your own thing. Remember to be your authentic selves. And for those of you who are already doing their own thing and being their authentic selves, thank you for being you. Crown me God, crown me king, you can crown me Lord.